I'm going to record it. Ah, F, you beat me to it. All right, let's do a quick of introduction. Just briefly, we all see each other's titles. Um, Tato just joined us as well, so we're going to start with Tato. Tato, tell us where you're dialing in from, and then we'll just do a quick circle of just introductions where folks in their institutions. Tato, Youth Impact, are you in Botswana as well? Yes. Hi, everyone. Great. And what's your role, Tata, with Youth Impact? I'm the Senior Manager for Content and Training. So I work with all our programs in designing the content, doing the training, and overseeing the implementation. So I'm excited. So I work uh, directly with the volunteers as well and also train uh, the volunteers. So excited to be here and learning about um, some of the volunteerism work that people do. Okay, um, Heidi, your role at Save the Children? Yeah, I'm a quality learning advisor and I am our global kind of lead for our early grade literacy and numeracy boost approaches, literacy boost and numeracy boost, which both include a core component that is led by volunteers. Um, I'll pass it over to Marie. Oh, is that me? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Meherine. Um, I'm with Team for Tech, and my role is as a program director. So we lead capacity building projects with nonprofits globally um, and also work with corporate partners that have highly skilled volunteers. So my main role is to kind of project manage the, um, the project from start to finish, um, particularly our, our longer projects that are oftentimes 10 plus weeks uh, with, you know, teams of up to 15 volunteers. So I will pass it over to Linda. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I uh, actually worked with Save the Children several years ago in Vietnam and in Southeast Asia. I uh, also worked with World Vision and most recently with USAID on the education team. I retired a couple of years ago and am now volunteering with uh, Tony on the M Education Alliance. And I'll turn it over to, I can't read the name, sorry. Agidia? Agidia, yes, thanks. Agidia. Thank you. Uh... I work for World Vision as Child Protection and Education Technical Program Manager. I've been working for over 15 years, but in different uh, Currently, I'm also at the community. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so I'm based at the headquarter, but I'm Technically supporting the third team. Thank you. Over. Effie. Hello, everyone. My name is Effie. I am a student at Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar. I just wound up a semester in Washington, D.C., where I was doing, I was taking lots of classes in politics and public policy just by the capital. I am also interning with the M Education Alliance. I've been interning with the M Education Alliance since last semester. I'm continuing my internship through the summer, mostly doing communication support. Yeah. Great. Is that everyone? Yes. Okay. Um, happy to uh, go. Oh, go. Sorry, Mari Shepi. Go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mutepi Macheng. I'm the co founder and managing director uh, of Youth Impact Organization. Uh, and also, in my other role, I am the chairperson of Botswana's National Youth Council, uh, which really is a um, structure within government uh, that oversees. Uh, youth development um, in the country, whether it's programming as well as um, advocating for policies. Uh, and I also head uh, the people and talent uh, department in the organization. So thinking a lot about, uh, you know, recruitment, um, just to give you a sense of, um, you know, recruiting volunteers is recently we had a call uh, for you know volunteers to to join the organizations which we you know turn them as our facilitators and within two days uh, we had received over 800 uh, applications so just putting in a plug there to say 
if there are any best practice um, just on how to, to think about, you know, massive uh, recruitments, I uh, would definitely be um, happy to, to, to hear that. That sounds great and potentially could be a future topic because we decide sort of topics among this group and then line up. That's terrific. All right, Tony Bloom, M Education Alliance. All right, so let's get started. Uh, Typically, we treat this like an e-cafe. Uh, if you have questions during the course of the presentation, just either raise your hand or drop it in the chat. Um, and then would you guys prefer um, that we do a presentation and then take Q&A or do all three presentations and take Q&A just by show of hand from our presenters? Or or tell me, because a show of hand won't tell me one way or the other. What do you think, Maureen? Do you want to, we'll take some Q&A a few after the presentation and then we'll go on to the next presentation or do all three? Um, I think after the presentation makes sense. Okay, are we good with that? Should be in. All right, well then we're going to kick off with uh, Agidia. Do you want to start us off with your experience with what makes a good education volunteer from your vantage point from World Vision Rwanda? Agidia? Sorry, I'm trying to share the screen. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you can see my screen. No, should we make her, we just have to make her co-host, right? Uh, I think I can do that, there you go. All right, now we got it. Okay. So I also shared it through the email. Yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, just for giving me this opportunity uh, to go through uh, the voluntarism. How uh, do we go about our voluntary process? Maybe I will not uh, say much about the practice, but also I want to just to give the background and the introduction of the uh, voluntarism. I don't know where, whether my screen is still appearing. Okay, perfect. So uh, I will just go through the introduction of voluntarism, definition, history, benefits, what makes a good volunteer as one of our topic, and qualities of a good volunteer, and then why is volunteering in education specifically so important? Um, so if I can start with the introduction, uh, many people all over the world, you know, this is uh, like a general uh, challenge across the, the world where there are different parameters, different disasters, different issues that call upon the attention of people to support voluntarily. So this is why voluntarism has played such a, a great role, especially in those crisis places but also in a normal process. And uh, I know now worldwide, uh, voluntarism is becoming like something to celebrate annually. And it has been recognized to be part of the uh, annual events uh, worldwide. Um, if we talk about the definition, voluntarism is the act of contributing free labor to conduct community service or support non-profit organization. So that is uh, the definition from uh, some of the authors. And the principle is that uh, of donating time and energy towards, maybe, uh, okay. Yeah, towards a, a greater cause. Voluntaries help change the lives of those in their communities as a social responsibility rather than leaving, give, uh, receiving a financial reward. Uh, I will just maybe take an example of Rwanda, uh, where we have different structures that are really supporting as volunteers in our communities. And we have community health workers that are community-based volunteers. We have friends of families in Shutizumo Diango that are also community-based volunteers. And those are the government structures that are serving the voluntary service within the, uh, the communities. We also have uh, different structures, uh, different levels of the structure. So these are the people that really are bringing significant contribution 
to the commuters. If we talk about the types, I will not. I will just go uh, quickly through it. We have a corporate that involves employees contributing their time and talents to assist nonprofits and other charitable organizations. I think this happens across the world, wherever possible. Students, there are some graduates or students that during their vacations, they take their time to support the community, to spare some time to support their communities in terms of development and also in terms of supporting their young children. We have school-based uh, volunteers. Uh, schools often rely on volunteer support to care for their students. So in Rwanda, we have what we call school management committee. But count, uh, worldwide, we have what we call PTAs, parents teachers associations that are really supporting the learning and teaching of the school and the management of the school. So they bring that relation between the school and the community in terms of uh, learning of the children. We also have uh, community volunteers. These volunteers can be one help out and contribute their time. Uh, sorry. Okay. Their time and efforts to improve their community. I have earlier mentioned about uh, the some of the volunteers in Rwanda. Even in World Vision, you have some volunteers that are helping community libraries or community centers, reading centers, where they are not paid, but they do the significant work in terms of supporting reading abilities to the children. We also have virtual uh, volunteer, you know, because of the technology. Now there are some people who really support global, globally how we can connect, like the way we are now doing. I think <laughs> we are more of doing uh, virtual uh, voluntary uh, opportunities to make sure that we are all connected and we are learning from each other. So this is also another uh, voluntary. We have emergency relief, especially in the disaster areas uh, or in the emergency areas where there is a need for a quick response to address some of the issues, either due to earthquakes, landslides, floods, and so on. There are very many calamities that really affect the world, even the wars that affect the world and calls upon the emergency relief uh, volunteers. There is also an event. Many volunteers choose to help out with major events. You know, there are some festivals or conferences that need support from from the, the communities. And here in Rwanda, we have what we call youth volunteers. They are playing a vital role in terms of supporting the community events and gatherings and the messaging even where they want to reach out to very many people. So no matter what type of volunteering that an organization can offer, but what we know is it's very important based on their types. So, uh, um, sorry, uh, okay. Today, volunteering is recognized as a high effective form of giving, but how did it all begin? So this is also a history. Mm? How did we come to know that voluntarism or voluntary uh, work is possible and it can benefit so uh, people? So there is a that history behind or behind it, uh, where uh, there is that simple uh, kindness that has really uh, significantly uh, indicated the world that there is a possible way people can do voluntary uh, work and then they make impact to the lives of people. So uh, volunteering has been uh, traced back to Britain in Mendova times where there was an urge to aid the poor and the sick. So they, pay, they played a vital role in those periods. Uh, then in 19th century, organized forms of volunteering start, start to pick up steam. YMCA, 
which began in 1884 in London. So you can see that thing, people were doing voluntary uh, activities, voluntary work, but it was not well streamlined or collected to be like something that really should be well structured in terms of supporting uh, the work and also be counted in terms of what they are doing. But in the 20th century, so the birth of many more voluntary organizations committed to making a positive impact. One example is the Rotary Club, which was formed as a place of people of different backgrounds, cultures, and beliefs to come together and exchange valuable ideas, create friendships, and make a change. So this is how the voluntary work started. And this is some of the examples of um, a voluntary organization that really did some significant impact. And now there is a software, voluntary management software that is also supporting in terms of recruitment and also supporting uh, non-profit organizations to make uh, to get the qualified and competent skilled volunteers who can make impact to their organization implementation process. So volunteering is important because it enables people to help uh, and serve others in a selfless way, you know? There is that commitment, there is that passion from that uh, voluntary people that is not counted in terms of financial uh, rewards. When individuals take the initiative to help people in the community and support uh, these uh, through picky causes, it can improve the community as whole well by creating tighter bonds and forming lasting relationships. So this is also uh, some of the uh, impact that people can get from uh, the volunteer, volunteers in their communities, wherever they are being, uh, where they are being located and they are based in terms of supporting the people. Nonprofit organizations are also benefiting from this kind of volunteers, especially the passionate volunteers to help achieve goals in making the world a better, safer place. Volunteering allows you to connect to your community and make it a better place. You know, uh, as Aria mentioned about in Rwanda, where we have youth volunteers. These youth volunteers, they do uh, development activity, community development activities in collaboration with the local government to make sure that a person who is in need is being supported, at least to get a shelter from the support of the volunteers and also even helping out with the smallest tasks and make a real difference to the lives of people, animals, and organizations in need, yeah. So what, are, what makes a good volunteer? Now I want here to look at the qualities and this is the major topic that uh, we, we are discussing about. One, we consider the passionate, Sorry, uh, Tony, I did not know the time that I had to do the presentation, but I, let me try to be quick. Rehabilitate, yeah. teamwork, patience, creativity, and energetic. All those qualities and more qualities are necessary to have a good uh, volunteer. Positive attitudes, that is very automatic. Willing to help, you know, there are some people even um, can be forced to do the work. So those cannot be good volunteers if they are being forced to even to serve the, the, the work that they have been recruited for. Passion uh, organized. So I also want to say about organized uh, volunteers who are able to be on time to keep time or to manage their time, and also to track the progress that they are in. So these are the well-managed and organized volunteers that can really make an impact and effect, and also great achievements in the communities. And if we want to read more about this, you can just get this uh, uh, 
uh, ring and then you go through it. So in education, uh, how uh, was like uh, voluntarism important? Uh, in most countries in Latin America, there was a big gap between public and private education. Many scholar scholarships allocated to vulnerable communities can't be awarded because students do not reach the required academic performance. Many students do not complete their studies and get involved in criminal or prostitution and drugs. And this is not only in Latin America, it is across the world. We always express such a kind of issues where some students, they end up uh, being involved in drug abuses uh, because of not being supported to have that kind of uh, nurturing uh, or good nurturing and also uh, charity uh, from, from their schools or from their homes. Volunteering in education can make a big change working with these communities. Education opens opportunities, change lives, and encourage individuals to contribute to their communities and ultimately to our world. So through our education system, uh, I think we also need to think about how we can promote this level of voluntarism, where even the most vulnerable communities can be supported through uh, voluntary uh, services. Even though voluntaries, volunteering is a paid commitment, it is still crucial to find the people who take the responsibility seriously. So there are some people who are still committed to serve as volunteers worldwide, irrespective of uh, demand from the world. You know, the world is so demanding and so uh, requiring some, some profit, some uh, financial support to make sure that you serve face free and correctly, but some other serious uh, volunteers that are still making this kind of good job to the people. So looking for volunteers who are passionate, reliable, team players, patient, creative, energetic, positive, willing to help, passionate and organized will ensure they are greater assets to our team. So I think this is one of the things that we should always think about. Uh, voluntarism, they have that selflessness to support, which uh, leads to sacrifice and then also to the service and support in the community. So they are, make it easy for volunteers to find your opportunities and register. So the other uh, website uh, also encourages, gives opportunity for how you can do the recruitment of uh, like quality volunteers in your organization, if it is non-profit making organization or even in your company, wherever it is. Offer, sorry, offer tangible benefits, make your volunteer program inclusive. This is also a gap, even from different authors and researchers. Uh, this kind of voluntarism is not yet inclusive in terms of how do we involve the participation of people with disability in terms of voluntary, voluntary uh, services and activities? And I think we need to think uh, how we can investigate more and get uh, that inclusive voluntary program. And we can say thank you for those volunteers. We also have uh, categories. We have mutual aid. Mutual aid is the, uh, is the worth of informal person-to-person -person helping activities embedded in community and cultural practices. People gather and volunteer together as a response to a shared need or issue. Then if we go to the service, service volunteering is where volunteers respond to the perceived needs of another person or community and then uh, campaigning, they are doing great work in terms of uh, involving the collective action to the groups of people moving from press to press, uh, spreading the message and so on. Participation, uh, 
participation is where volunteers give time and effort to ensure uh, to engage with government and decision making mechanism at different levels. As Aria uh, mentioned, our youth volunteers normally, after doing some of these uh, community uh, ac development activities, they come back and sit with their local readers and then they present what they have done and what are some of the gaps that really financial support to be more effective and supportive to the communities. And then there's also leisure, uh, you know, uh, volunteering as a leisure, it's also possible uh, with some people depending on interventions or in sports. And so there, there are those uh, other volunteers. So thank you, and I want to say thank you to all volunteers for their endless work and the job that they are doing. God bless you. Agidia, that was great. Maybe just a little, that was so comprehensive, Agidia, that was outstanding. And what we hope we could do is we'll post the recording and put it on the site. I'm sure you'll have, uh, we'll have questions afterwards, but Agidia, that's just great covering like the history of volunteerism, types of volunteerism. So that was excellent. And uh, and especially thank you if this presentation was specifically prepared for, uh, for our community of practice. Um, all right, so we'll, let's save our questions. Um, Maureen, I'll look forward to hearing about the amazing Team for Tech experience. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, Tony. And thanks, Agidia, for getting us started. I'll just share my screen. And as it's still loading, oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, so I feel like that was a really great background into why volunteerism and some of the um, the history behind it. And so my presentation is a little bit more about Team for Tech's approach to volunteerism and how we engage volunteers. Um, so I'll share a little bit more about, you know, one, how we recruit volunteers, two, how we engage them, and then three, sustain their work um, on these impactful projects with education nonprofits. Um, so just to kind of provide a little background, I think that would be maybe a little bit helpful for everyone to kind of understand how volunteers fit into our model. Um, so Team for Tech, we are a nonprofit impact accelerator, and our mission is really to bridge the digital equity gap and improve the quality of education for under-resourced learners around the world. Um, so how do we do this? Our work is really threefold. We, one, develop long-term partnerships with education nonprofits. Um, we know that change in education takes time, and so we partner with our nonprofits for three to five years, and sometimes even longer to help them test and iterate solutions, specifically using a human-centered design approach. Um, two, we build staff capacity through training and technology implementation, and this is where our volunteers really come into play. Um, we work with amazing corporate partners that help us to match volunteers with nonprofits with the right skills on very certain project scopes. Um, and then lastly, we provide grant funding to our nonprofits to help them set up technology solutions that are most relevant for their context. Um, so together with these three stakeholders, we really help our partners to scale their work and really demonstrate what works within their local context. Um, and this is our 10th year as an organization. Um, we have provided over $19 million of technology grants and in-kind consulting services to over 50 nonprofit partners across 20 different countries. Um, and that's really made possible by the over 1,600 skilled employee volunteers that have been able to join us and contribute to these pro bono projects. So this is kind of a snapshot of our volunteer program's impact. Um, and so now that you kind of have a sense of how volunteers fit into our model, I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, what has helped us to find the right types of volunteers to engage in our projects. Um, so we really credit our impact outcomes specifically around volunteers to these three uh, key factors. One is recruitment. So how do we spark an interest while also setting expectations on the front end with volunteers during that recruitment phase? Um, two, engagement. What is the volunteer experience like throughout the project? What skills do volunteers come in with? But also how can we help grow their leadership skills as well as they're on a project? 
And then sustainability. So how do we equip volunteers to be lifelong education change makers? So the first bucket, um, recruitment, um, you know, this is a really crucial component to our project because it ensures that volunteers are both inspired by the project, but also motivated to stick with it, especially when it gets challenging. Um, so as part of our interview process, especially for our longer projects that can last up to 10 weeks, we interview all interested applicants and really ask about their motivation for applying. Um, we typically look for volunteers who want to use their professional skills in a meaningful way, um, have a desire to learn from the nonprofit, they're curious about their leadership growth, they're committed to educational equity, um, and then they're passionate about giving back. So those tend to be some of the themes that arise as a part of the application process. Um, we also look to develop diverse teams. So this can look at anything like skills, geographic regions, experience, company tenure, departments. Um, I feel like Agidia mentioned disabil disabilities and making sure that we are building inclusive teams as well. Um, while we don't necessarily ask that, I, I, we have had a number of um, folks on our project also that identify as neurodiverse learners as well. So creating opportunities to really lean into folks as diverse. University. Um, yep, and then we clearly communicate with interested applicants the time commitment. So our long projects can be up to three to five hours per week over 10 weeks. Um, so obviously it's pretty vital that volunteers are engaged throughout that project. Um, and then lastly, we look for employees that are curious about their leadership development um, and that are interested in growing as a leader as well um, as part of their pro bono experience. So that kind of leads into my second factor here around um, volunteer engagement. So once a volunteer is on the project, what is their experience like? Um, and so we look for volunteers to both leverage their skilled expertise or their technical expertise, as well as to grow personally and professionally as well. So we do have a team for tech leadership curriculum, which covers five capabilities as they're on the project. So they're working in sub teams on the pro bono work, but then also engaged in this leadership development as well. Um, and just briefly, those five areas are customer centric innovation, decision making amidst ambiguity, growth mindset, communication and collaboration, and then um, DEI work. And so in the beginning of our projects, we focus heavily on building empathy and really using the human-centered design approach so that volunteers have a better understanding of the cultural context of our nonprofits. Um, we're able to do this by providing tools, resources, and articles that help them to grow those skills. Um, we also, also find that our project scopes can sometimes be broad or kind of general in nature or change throughout the project. So we look for volunteers that are also able to tolerate ambiguity and adapt to shifting expectations. Um, and then the last point here is that Team for Tech program directors also will strategically place volunteers into sub teams based on their skills. And then the last factor is our sustainability. So how do we help inspire volunteers to be lifelong um, education change makers? So after completing a project with us, we actually um, call our Team for Tech volunteers fellows and they join our fellow community. They also receive this fellow badge um, and volunteers can stay engaged and support our nonprofits through um, our community of practice as well. Um, and that's not just our strategic nonprofits and our strategic portfolio, but um, nonprofits globally that are a part of our online community. Um, we also have monthly Fellow Fridays events. This is where they can hear from a featured nonprofit specific impact updates. They can reconnect with some of their old volunteer colleagues and friends. Um, so just a great way to build community. We have volunteers also return for sometimes a second, third, or even fourth project if their company allows it. So just kind of that longevity of volunteerism. Um, and then, yeah, we've seen volunteers stay engaged with their nonprofit after a project is over um, in other capacities. So this could look like joining a board. Um, we've even had a volunteer set up an internship program between his company um, and the learners within the, the nonprofit's community. Um, so yeah, that is really just a brief summary of our approach. Um, 
really, again, focused on recruiting highly motivated volunteers, um, engaging those volunteers with their unique strengths, but also helping them to grow, and then also sustaining a lifelong community of education volunteers long beyond the close of a single pro bono project. Um, and also, just while I'm here, I'd love to invite you all to our community of practice as well. You all are welcome to join, so I'll drop that link um, in the chat as well. Maureen, thanks, and um, I'm so glad that uh, we have the slides and it's recorded because we'll absolutely just like Agidias want to be able to share this terrific presentation with with others. We'll save our questions. I, I see that Mochepi had posted one in the chat, but just to make sure that we could get all three presentations, um, Maureen, we'll come back with questions for you, just like for Agidia. Mochepi, over to you to talk about youth impact and volunteerism. Uh, thank you so much. And, you know, when I was listening to Gidea and Marvin, uh, I just realized that, you know, they, they have already captured it all. So, uh, which really um, it is a good thing. So I will be very brief. Um, let me share. All right. Well, um, hello everyone, really excited to be sharing more of our presentation around um, youth impact, but also what makes uh, a good volunteer. Uh, and also just to set the stage, um, you know, is just to share a little bit more about youth impact, uh, which the team has shared. So we established in 2014, um, and our mission is to scale up uh, evidence-based programming uh, with a focus on health uh, as well as education. Uh, and we have a really solid, you know, partnership uh, with government uh, of Botswana, particularly the Ministry of Basic Education, uh, as well as the Ministry of Youth, uh, for us to be able to implement um, our, and scale up our programs in all primary and junior schools. Uh, so our mission and our footprint is quite strong uh, in Botswana, but also relatedly, we've worked, you know, in quite a number of countries and uh, that map, you know, just shows how wide uh, our spread is moving towards. Uh, these are our three core programs. And one of the important pieces around uh, the work that we do is that it is you know, delivered uh, by volunteers, uh, but also we work uh, with the National Service uh, Youth Scheme uh, in which there are over 15,000 uh, young people uh, that are uh, not employed, but placed uh, in schools. And this is a system uh, in which government uh, provides you know, compensation for. Uh, so we try and unlock uh, the potential uh, of the national uh, service schemes uh, in their varied, uh, you know, or unique uh, contributions. Uh, so just to put a little bit more of a picture of where we are, is we have, I would say, two distinct uh, various uh, volunteer models. Uh, the first one is our directly hired uh, facilitators. Um, these are young people uh, who are usually between the, eight, uh, the ages of 18, 35. Uh, they go through a rigorous um, you know, youth impact application process uh, from you know, sending in uh, the applications, sometimes you know, attached with the deliverables, just so that we can see uh, you know, how, how they can be able to perform. Uh, but also it's usually a one-year uh, contract. Uh, with a stipend of roughly $200 uh, per month. Uh, and we then have our second scheme, uh, which are national service uh, program. Uh, this is where the Ministry of Youth uh, provides, you know, a relatively small stipend of about $70 uh, to young people. Uh, and these young people are, you know, placed uh, throughout the country uh, and usually in schools and clinics. Uh, often, you know, they share that they're underutilized or sometimes even forgotten. 
And one of the things that we wanted to embark on as an organization is what are some of the existing uh, schemes, right? Uh, that government you know, has in place that we can tap and unlock. Uh, and hence why it's very important that we uh, work with um, the national service. Uh, we've trained over 500 plus, uh, but also one of the things that is really important is that we get to unlock their potential. Um, so in you know their typical day before they started implementing youth impact, uh, they were asked, you know, sent around to make tea uh, or just even, you know, um, be at the library to to monitor um, you know the books coming in and going out. Uh, but now when they start you know implementing um, the youth impact programs, you know one of the things they share is learning new skills, uh, but also you know really feeling right that they can make a, a difference, uh, but also ensure that they could be able to meaningfully uh, do something with their time. Uh, which I think is one of the key aspects um, that is important to making a good volunteer. Uh, so we are, you know, in um, the business of really, you know, building a movement and we want to be able to support uh, government, right, to upskill uh, young people, but also we are one of uh, the largest, you know, youth employers in, in the country. So we really do take um, it's seriously just to ensure that we could be able to have uh, the right folks, uh, as well as uh, ensuring that we do have, um, you know, we provide them with the necessary support that volunteers need. Uh, what makes a good volunteer? I think the team um, here has already shared some. Uh, one of the things that's very important is um, a good volunteer, someone that's very mission uh, driven. Uh, they understand, right, uh, what their contribution is, uh, but also want to make a difference. Uh, one of the questions that we ask at interview stage is that, you know, do you enjoy working with students, right? I definitely know uh, that I probably will be a terrible uh, facilitator in a class when I have to deal, you know, with uh you know grade grade three students right because they are running around um and doing many things right but you need that patience uh you need that passion um and also just understanding you know what the role uh is uh, and also wanting to see and uh, make a difference uh another thing that you know i think was captured uh in the two presentation is around uh intentional recruitment uh, one of the things that we do is we have a process, um, even from interview stage, um, as well as even, you know, from the application. There's a process uh, with clear expectations, uh, but also with clear, you know, questions that will be able, um, you know, to see whether one would be good for the role. Um, you know, for example, you know, can you, and we have a lot of role-playing scenarios, and I think that really um, makes a difference on uh, the type of volunteers that uh, we recruit. Uh, for example, we ask uh, during the interview round, uh, can you teach, you know, 47 plus 12, uh, right, to a student? Uh, and we actually ask them to role play uh, at, in the moment. And another thing, you, you know, you may ask, how do we actually do the selection uh, with government and at school level? Uh, we actually, you know, share expectations uh, in advance uh, with, you know, the school headmasters uh, in which then they send uh, the folks that are matching, you know, those expectations um, at training. Uh, and at training, we actually have the liberty to assess their performance and how they're doing uh, so that we can, you know, ensure that they can be able to deliver and be successful at that delivering. But I think the whole idea around uh, intentional recruitment and selection is so important, you know, just to really, um, you know, choose a volunteer, but also ensure that they align to expectations. Uh, another thing is commitment, uh, which I think has been alluded for. Um, one, you know, has to really, you know, be committed uh, to, you know, the long term, but also to be able to doing uh, the role that they are, you know, delegated to do. I think this is important, you know, to be accountable, 
uh, but also, you know, to be able to self-manage, right, uh, for them to, to deliver on, on their role. Uh, one of the, the last one, uh, which I really love, uh, is one of to have a growth focus and a growth uh, mindset, right, the ability to, um, you know, willingness to learn, uh, you know, appreciate feedback, uh, be able to really see the role that they are performing, um, you know, as for the greater good. And I think that really makes uh, a difference, right, uh, to being a, a good volunteer. Uh, that said, uh, that was all that I had uh, for you all. And, and thank you so much. We had another round of applause. Terrific. That, that was great. All three presentations uh, providing sort of a comprehensive description of your own project interventions, the qualities for making a good volunteer. And then uh, again, really happy to be able to share this. Let's just open it up for a few minutes of uh, Q&A. Uh, any, anybody want to start with questions of each other? Majepi, I see you had a question, I think, for Maureen that you had dropped in the chat. So maybe if you want to start off with the question that you had asked her. Thanks um, both for, for the presentation. Yeah, I just had a quick one around how long, you know, do your volunteers, ask, you know, do they volunteer before they move to the fellow and what usually, you know, would be their qualifications? Yeah, definitely. So we have a number of types of projects. Some are short term, like only three days. And there are these fast paced workshops that where the volunteer would, it would be about six hours over those three days. And then we have our longer ones, which are our more popular ones. Those are about 10 weeks and three to five hour per week. And then during that, they, we refer to them as volunteers. But once they finish at least one pro bono project with us, then they become a fellow with us. Um, and then they're a lifelong fellow. So we really consider them as, you know, team for tech ambassadors. Um, and they're able to support any of the nonprofits within our portfolio. Um, and that's actually, I would say just like transparently, that's one of the things that we're growing right now and trying to work on is how do we re-engage volunteers, especially because we do go through corporate partners, um, you know, for the specific pro bono projects, but how do we really tap into the wealth of our fellows beyond the project um, and re-engage them in, maybe like one-off pro bono projects or directly supporting a nonprofit um, or even just inviting them to some of our like community events so that they can stay updated on what's going on with um, us as an organization, but also the nonprofits that we work with. I know that's helpful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Heidi, it looks like you have a question, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so just generally, it's great doing these presentations and for me, one of the insights which sounds kind of obvious, but isn't the first thing that would have come to my mind that, that several of you brought up was that ability to self-manage um, and that time management aspect. Um, probably wouldn't come to the top of my mind as something I'm thinking of. But I noticed that among uh, Agidia's and Shepi's presentations that you were focused more on youth volunteers. And I was wondering if you had experience working with other types of volunteers, because I'd say the children, we have some programs that have done like our math clubs and our reading clubs through youth volunteers and they specifically target looking at youth. And then there are other ones that are more focused on um, like older generations, like moms, like stay at home moms or grandmas or that kind of thing. And part of what we've been thinking about as we started this process of analyzing is we realized we could actually have very different types of volunteer roles based on like the volunteer profiles, you know, where like, so we even think like volunteers might be able to do more intensive time for a shorter period of time, you know, like they might be able to do a month where they're, they're spending a couple hours every day with kids, like a summer camp type thing, versus moms, they might be able to do something, you know, every week, but like for like an hour or two, but, but they might be able to last for more than a year, even, you know, depending on, on who they were. So I was just wondering if you've considered um, how your models kind of apply to different categories of volunteers or profiles of volunteers. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, the, the reason why I was just uh, mentioning the youth volunteers, those are the common ones uh, in the community, but we have different categories of volunteers, as Aria mentioned. We have community health workers, that is a government structure voluntary uh, service. 
that is done by the community members themselves, supporting their fellow members with specific uh, service and support. We have uh, friends or families, we call them Shutizu Muriango. Those are the ones that are responsible for child protection. They do a lot in terms of protecting children, reporting the cases of abuse, supporting the family in terms of referral process. So they are also doing a great work in terms of their community uh, services. And those are the, the others, they are, not, they are not youth. And then in the World Vision, we also have what we call uh, community uh, reading club facilitators. Those are specifically supporting the reading abilities of children within their communities. They are being identified by their fellow community members as an integrated uh, volunteers, as honest, as supportive team, because through the, the, the selection process, we normally gather the communities to, uh, based on the criteria that we, to get the uh, qualified and appropriate volunteers that we can work with in our community libra reading libraries or reading clubs. So, those are also adult volunteers that are supporting in different ways with their interventions. And, and many more, because even at the school level, there are different volunteers that are supporting in terms of school management, uh, the discipline of the children, and, 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 and also the learning to ensure the learning uh, and teaching practices is being conducted uh, based on the on the curriculum and appropriately so they are they are they are they are different uh volunteers not specifically used but youth are commonly uh used especially the graduates the, those ones that uh have graduated the secondary level they normally spend like one year uh in the community supporting the community volunteer uh, the community development activities yeah mm -hmm. thank you Thank you, Gideon. Heidi, it looks like you have to run and we'll yeah, wrap sorry. up. Yeah, no, I'll great. Other answers later. <laughs> great. Um, if there's another two minutes, uh, Maureen, Matepi, Gideon, are you okay? With it, we'll round it out at 9.05. Uh, this is perfect. And again, because we're recording this, we, we'll make this available. And Gideon, I did get your slides. And Maureen and Matepi, if you want to send your slides to us, we're going to create a new education volunteers and page on the M Education Alliance website, like we have for Literacy League or Math Power. Linda uh, and Effie, we could talk about um, how that would look, but we'll include the theme of today's presentation in the three slides. Agidia, you mentioned uh, Rotary in your presentation, and I'm a Rotarian, uh, and also I used to work for Peace Corps. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was wondering. Um, if you want to elaborate uh, the relationship any of you might have with volunteer sending agencies like Peace Corps or VSO or local organizations like Rotarians, if you've been able to tap into those networks or others VSO. So just yeah. any any mm, comments? Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the reason why I talked about the Rotary, it's about the history of the voluntary uh, activities. So it is something that I have just searched and also uh found out that it is very crucial and important to know that this is something that uh happened some years back and it is still uh happening and also still working and supporting the communities so it's not something that has just come now but it's something that has already been happening yeah Okay, Maureen and Mesepi, and I see Linda has a question, so I want to make sure that we have the minute for, but Maureen or Mesepi, any any other linkages with like volunteer sending agencies? Um, I would say not, not formal, but we have two Rockstar uh, Peace Corps um, alumni that have joined uh, the organization. We are also uh, really, you know, honored uh, to be able to uh, be in partnership with the Rotary Club, uh, particularly on our first car uh, donation. Uh, mm -hmm. So Rotary did play a role uh, in that, which we we are truly you know thankful for. Great, thanks. Yeah, nothing. I would say nothing really on our end. Um, we do um, have some like long term partnerships with specific 
you know, corporate partners and then also some universities. We do have a, I didn't mention this, but we do have a, a summer program for university oh. students, um, particularly with Middlebury, um, but other other types of programs, no, not not so much. Okay, uh, thanks, Marie. Linda, you, you had a quick question yeah, about just, corporations, go ahead. Right, just a quick question to Maureen. Um, how do you recruit corporations uh, to provide volunteers? I think that's a really key area that we could develop more. Yeah, um, I would say the majority of our, our corporate partners are tech-based companies. So especially because we are focused on technology integration with our nonprofits, um, they tend to be more global tech companies. Um, and it really kind of depends, you know, I think um, our BD team does a really good job of reaching out to potential corporate partners that have a, um, a CSR department, specifically where they're focused on corporate social responsibility. Um, I would also say they are more global companies, so not necessarily just based in the US, but have um, have offices around the world because then they have that more global look and want to support our global nonprofits. Um, but yeah, I do think kind of the, if they have an established skills-based volunteering program that oftentimes helps because they're used to skills-based volunteering. Um, if not, sometimes then we're helping them to establish that type of program um, and really Kind of doing what we did today and explaining why volunteering is also good for corporate partners bottom line and how it helps them to build effective um, giving back programs. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, well thank you. We are small but mighty and again we're a community of practice so if a few folks show up and share their experiences that's great and it builds momentum over time. Um, so this was excellent. So I think we're going to be looking for recommendations for the next uh, quarterly discussion. I feel like, Gidea, you started with having some topic uh, that you previously mentioned as well, um, but would welcome those. We'll, if you send us your slides and you're okay, we'll post it along with the recordings. And um, any sort of general feedback before we conclude about uh, Effie, was there a particular aha? that you got from the presentation that you wanted to share? Yeah, I mean, I liked all three presentations. I think they also went in like a really nice order because it felt like they were building on each other really nicely. Um, I like the fact that um, I think it was Gidea that pointed out the fact that um, it's still important for us to have people who are willing to volunteer their time to do things outside the space of this financial compensation for this. And I like the idea that while you're not giving your volunteers financial compensation, you're equipping them with something else, which is what um, what Shefe and Marine were saying they do. So technically upskilling them in some way or just helping them grow networks. And I, I like that concept very much, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Well, have a great day, everyone. And we'll look forward to seeing you at the next uh, quarterly meeting. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.